Hello, ladies. This is Help Meets for Heroes, the Sister Cindy Show. And today's show is about hospitality, being given to hospitality. And I have a very special guest with me, Sister Karina. We are here in sunny California. It's a little bit cloudy, but that's okay. It makes for a better video. Brother Jed and company are going to UCLA today, but yes. Karina and her husband David are our wonderful host for two weeks, which is kind of long to stay in one place for a, a host to take care of us. But I want to introduce you to Karina and then we're going to have a little discussion about hospitality. She loves the Lord Jesus. She and her husband David have been in, uh, what's the name of your church? Grace Chapel Christian Fellowship in Huntington Park. Yes, for four decades. Four decades yes. And they have been happily married for how long? 34 years in April. Woo. Love being married. <laughs> two kids and two grandchildren mm -hmm. and we have known each other for decades I've known your face yes. and say hello in church be encouraged but it's really Facebook that got us together yes. which is kind of amazing yes. about six or seven years ago my second daughter Charlotte was coming to California to pursue her nursing dream of being a travel nurse so she was a young lady coming out here all by herself, finding a place to stay. And I put on Facebook, does anybody have room for my daughter for a few months while she could settle? And you responded. Yes, I did, amen. And Charlotte was here, I think, for about three, three months. Three months. And she's still here in California, but uh, she got her own place. Well, let me ask you, Karina, how did you first decide to open your beautiful home to hospitality? Uh, many, many years ago, um, many years ago, um, David and I always had uh, a heart to um, be hospitable and to help mm -hmm. others um, in the body of Christ and family. And um, it was just a passion that we had. But back in those days, we lived in a little apartment mm -hmm. wow. and really weren't able to do that because we lived in a small apartment and that I managed for many years and um, I just really began to seek the Lord in the desire that I had and uh, it just came to fruition through the years of being faithful and, and you know God knows the desires of our hearts he yes, really he does. does without question and um, we just began to just really pray and believe God that he was going to give us the desires of our hearts and to those that are faithful and um, it's just mind-blowing how it all just came to fruition and we got blessed with a home and uh, Praise God. We, we prayed and we asked the Lord, Lord, we want a home that we can help the body of Christ, missionaries that come in from out of the country and pastors that come from out of state um, to host and to be a blessing because so many of them, like yourselves, that come from out of state, um, they, a lot of them experience loneliness. Mm -hmm. They want the fellowship. They don't want to be in a hotel. That is so true. And uh, that really touched our hearts, and we wanted to do that. So we began to do that, and it just became like a... You said something the other day that I thought was very interesting. You said a revolving door. <laughs> that thought never came to my mind, and I thought, oh my gosh, that's so true. That's kind of like what we are. And, um, and that's what we've been, and we've been a blessing. And in turn, the Lord has blessed us, you know, because we're called to bless one another. Yes. And to help one another, um, especially those in the faith. And that's what we've been doing. And um, it's not only blessed them, but it's blessed us. And our desire is just to make them feel comfortable, like if they're in a home. Because um, that's just something we've always wanted to do. We are very comfortable here, and we do love the fellowship. 
but it's also in places like California such a big financial blessing because motels or hotels are so expensive here. So it saves us a lot of money and we're really thankful. But it is so much fun to, to be with Karina and David and have the fellowship. Now, so your husband was always excited about the idea and that makes sense to me because I remember you had a barbecue for a bunch of us a couple of years ago and you got a headache and had to go inside and he just kept bringing food out the whole <laughs> afternoon. It was just one treat after another. He really has it down. He does, he loves to do that. He's got a servant's heart and that's wonderful to have. Yes, he does. Now, relatively speaking, you still have a small home. Um, it's a two bedroom home. So how did you make room for what well, you've had our team of four and sometimes you've even had more. How do you make room? I think the most we've ever hosted at one time was nine. Wow. And, <laughs> but I love the fellowship and you know, we used, we started off with air mattresses and we kind of worked our way up and you kind of learn as you go. Uh -huh. And um, I just love the fact of being creative. Yeah. And it makes a big difference. Uh, there's times that we actually did move furniture out of a room. Wow. But uh, we're getting a little older, so it's getting a little more challenging to do that. Uh -huh. That's when our kids and our grandkids come in and help. But we tried to make them feel comfortable because, you know, they're doing a the work and um, I think most people don't realize the work that they do is intense and it drains them emotionally because they give so much of themselves so we want them to come home and, and to be comfortable and to be free to just feel like they're at home. We, that's our number one goal is to make them feel uh, welcome. And we do. You know? And we're on an air mattress in their living room. <laughs> Number two air mattress. But it's very a very, very comfortable yeah. air mattress. More comfortable than some of our motel beds. And there's a little fireplace in there to turn on on the chilly California nights. Yes. So it's just perfect. And then you gave your family room to Sister Serena. Myrna and Sister Pat. So it's wonderful the way you've squeezed us in here and we don't even feel crowded. God, God makes room, he yes, provides. He um, what would you advise a young mom or young wife, she may not be a mom, whose husband really wants to do the hospitality, her hero's into it, she'd like to please him, but she just feels overwhelmed. I think they should especially the young moms i really think you should just challenge yourself and take a step of faith and do the little things uh maybe start off with having one person in your home and and that's how we did and that's how i learned especially as a wife um you know the being creative um, i learned from a friend of mine um, that lives up north she would have a little gift basket with water Aww. tissue you know a little she would make homemade cookies <laughs> and she would leave a little card so you we glean off of each other and that really inspired me a lot um, to do that but um, I would encourage you young moms not to be afraid because you never know the people that you have in your home the fellowship that they need and the lives that you can touch just by you being you and mm -hmm. being yourself I think sometimes uh, young moms and even women in general we get intimidated because of who you have in your home but you come to realize that they're they're no different than you are. We're all the same. Yes, we love the Lord. We have that in common, and um, and they so desperately need the fellowship. So you're being a tremendous blessing. It doesn't cost a lot to do that. Um, if you use your creativity uh, wisely, you'd be amazed how far you can go. And we were talking about. I was afraid that some of the younger wives might see these elaborate tables we set and the big meals we like oh, yeah. to make or how we decorate our home mm -hmm. and feel pressured. But I have been just as happy in very meager homes. Mm -hmm. I don't mind being invited over just for popcorn or ice cream or hot dogs. Yeah. It doesn't have to be 
something elaborate like you say you learn to be creative mm -hmm. and do more if that's you yes. but if paper plates are you that's fine we're happy with paper plates yes. Yes. and sometimes you at this uh, Karina can cook some really nice meals but she you also work full time yes and you haven't had time to cook for us so sometimes you have to say you're on your own for meals <laughs> only do what you can do I only do what I can do yes so. and not feel bad about it either mm -mm. yeah yeah no guilt so do you have you've already given quite a few tips for the young hostess is there anything else that sticks out in your mind just um just have the heart of a servant because that's what we're called to do yeah you know we learn from uh, the old testament and the new testament and how god just um that's actually a command one of the commandments you know is to, um, to be hospitable and to pray for one another to encourage one another and then just glean off of each other. I, I glean off of watching Sister Cindy and her little personality, you know, it's so funny. I mean, pe people get the impression that you're real serious and you're just, yeah, but she's got a real funny side to her and I love gleaning off of that and with Myrna and her laugh, and, you know, and just watching them just fellowship with each other. That blesses us as a host. You'd be amazed in the blessings that come from that. And it makes you feel good to go outside of yourself and be a blessing to somebody else. And and I'm grateful for the people that have uh, blessed us with um, even the finances to be a host. Sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. they give us things and and they'll say, if you need anything, let us know. Or, so it, it's a blessing. It really is. It's a gift to be a gift. Mm -hmm. Well, one final question. The Bible says to don't forget to be hospitable because some people have entertained angels unaware. <laughs> but most of us are not, not angels. <laughs> so what's your tip for guests? How can we be better guests or just guests out there in general? How can they do a better job? Um, I, there are a lot of street preachers, wives that listen, people travel, they go to other people's yeah. homes. How can they make sure they're going to be invited back? I would encourage the guests that do go into a home to um, pick up after yourself. Um, that means a lot um, because it, it shows that you appreciate being uh -huh. there. Mm -hmm. And um, really, that's I think that would be one of the number one concerns is that you just appreciate the host by uh, picking up after yourself and uh, not feeling like um, you have to be there, you know, with the host. Um, we don't want to give our guests that impression that while well, you're in a home, you gotta make time for us. No, uh -huh. no, that you should make a, a host feel that way. I give them the freedom to come and go with as they please. And uh, because they have an agenda and uh, they have work to do for the kingdom. But uh, I think that's really one of the main concerns of being a host uh -huh. is, uh, is just picking up after yourself. And good work. Yeah. Everything else follows. So pick up after yourselves if you're invited into someone's home. Thank you for tuning in yes. to Help Meets for Heroes. Yes. Um, if you've got the gift of hospitality, go for it. And you know, you can develop that gift too. You would be surprised. So there's a need out there. And sometimes God will just use you if you see a need and do it. And so, uh, and also remember to ask your hero, what can I do for you today, dear? God bless you. God bless. Bye.